lying down, actually. So I like to start uh, when we're in class by lying down on your back. Take just, we'll just take a moment there, and we'll start with an opening chant, which is sort of a classical way of uh, opening our practice, and then we'll move in from there. Okay, so here, get comfortable. You can lay down in Shavasana, so you're lying down on your back with your arms maybe out a little bit, legs a little bit apart. You can stretch your legs out um, and just have them maybe a little bit hip distance apart, okay? And just take a moment here to just really let go. So feel the floor underneath you. Release, you know, the weight of the body to the floor. And start to just kind of tune into your breathing like you're turning inwards. Okay, so I'll start with the opening chant. Om Sahana Bhavatu Okay, so from here, let's lay down on the back. <clears throat> We're just going to do a couple warm ups here. Paul, come here. Okay, <clears throat> so you're going to lay down, you're, gonna, you're still laying down, we'll bend the knees, we'll lift the hips and just swing them off to the right side of your sticky mat. And then stretch your legs out and take them towards the left side of your sticky mat. And then you're going to reach over your head and grab your right wrist in your left hand. And we're just going to do like a big human banana. So you're going to press that right heel away, reach the arms kind of across the body. Try to get as much length um, down that right side as you can. Just see if you can just get it opening a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna release there and move to the other side. So bend your knees, okay. Center your hips and then take them off to the left side of your sticky mat. Feet head off towards the bottom right corner. Reach around, grab your left wrist in your right hand and just kind of try to lengthen down that chain all the way. You're pressing that left heel away and try to get as much length all the way down that left side body as you can. Okay, and then we're gonna release there. Center your hips again. So a couple more warm-ups from lying down on the floor. We'll take the knees in towards the chest, but just a little bit. This is not drawing them right in. See if like, if you were to feel your two front hip bones and track underneath that, that's kind of the sacral area of the, or the back of the pelvis. So when you lift your knees, see if you can just feel like the weight is coming through there. So there's actually a little bit of space between your low back and the floor. And see, can you do a few circles with your knees? I'm gonna start in one direction a few times. Okay, and then we're gonna head off in the other direction, so change directions. Notice if it feels easier you know, to move in one way than one direction than the other. Okay, just to kind of get that sacral iliac joint moving a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna take the feet to the floor and here let's do a lying spinal twist. Okay, so you're gonna lift your butt up and swing it off towards the right side of your sticky mat. Take your legs up in the air so you have like a 90 degree angle at the legs, arms out to the sides, and lower your legs to the left. And just move the blanket out of the way here. And your, your top hand, if you like, you can rest it on the top uh, leg. And we'll just take a few good breaths here, just trying to get, you know, allow that top leg to release a little bit towards the bottom leg. Feel, you know, the you know, gentle twist in your spine. Notice a little bit going on in the rib cage, maybe. And feel your breathing. So always a little bit restricted and twist, but try to just, you know, see how 
you experience the pose and how that changes whether you're taking an inhale or an exhale. Okay, let's head back up. All right, so here we're gonna go the other side. So lift your bum up and swing it off to the left side of your sticky mat. Take your legs up in the air at around 90 degrees and we'll drop them, or, or I should say lower them off to the right side. And you can take your hand on the top leg if you look. Like we're doing this as a warm up. Don't worry if your knees don't stack up perfectly evenly or anything like that. Just start to allow a nice gentle twist to take place and see can you release that top leg a little bit towards the bottom leg. Head could be turned a little bit towards the left, just slightly left to center. And again here, experience the pose through the breath. All right. Okay, so from here we'll come back up. And this time we're gonna roll to the side and we'll come up onto the hands and knees. And let's take child's position. So from here for child's position, we're gonna do it um, with your knees a little wider than your hips for this. Um, I like to do that at the beginning of the practice because when you come forward, it frees up your breathing quite a bit more. So you're gonna have your knees a little bit wide. You sit your butt towards your heels. It's not available always for everybody. Don't worry about it. You just let it go down as much as possible. You could, if you feel really tight in your quads, you could grab a blanket and put it um, like above, uh, between your ankles and your thighs is another option too. All right, so from here, we're gonna walk the hands out. This one is an active pose. We're not doing as much of a passive child position. So straighten your arms, straighten your elbows, and press the heeled hands into the floor. You can let the head um, come so that the ears are between the upper arms. And that might be with the forehead on the floor or not. It doesn't matter. Just nice straight back. Or, you know, you're really trying to lengthen out your spine here. And as you're doing that, you know, feel your breathing. You're with the head pointing down. You can kind of um, listen to the sound of your breathing. I feel the movement. Notice how, you know, your ribs are moving as you breathe. A couple more breaths like that. Okay, so from here we're gonna come up onto the hands and knees and we'll take downward facing dog. So if you have anything going on in your shoulders or elbows, it's not always comfortable to bear the, uh, the weight of the full downward dog. So your options are, you know, you could actually do, you know, like more like a little bit more like child, just kind of like a puppy pose coming back. That's one option. The other option would be to do a half downward dog. So where your hips are over your knees, you walk your arms forward and you're doing a half downward dog. So you're bearing some weight, but not the full weight of the body. So just so you have a couple of other options to do. Uh, otherwise, come on into the full downward dog. So you tuck your toes under, uh, straighten out your legs. <clears throat> it's actually okay if your knees are a bit bent. You're actually really trying to get, you can even wiggle around a bit into the pose. You're trying to get your as much length in the back as possible. When the legs straighten, um, that's kind of the gravy, like the final pose. So uh, if, you, if you experiment with bending your knees, see can you get your back a little bit longer, your hips further up and back maybe. Kind of experiment with that a little bit, see what feels good. And then take some good breaths here. We're just working in that first downward dog. Okay, we won't hold this one too long. We're gonna walk the feet up towards the hands. You can just take little baby steps. If you prefer to walk your hands towards your feet, that's fine too. And here, maybe just squat down, take a little rest, rib cage on your thighs, and we'll take the fingertips either onto your legs or onto the floor, shoulders 
um, descending like towards your bum. Let the head release down. And just a couple breaths here. You could lift, uh, straighten your legs a little bit if you can do that still with that nice contact. And again, we won't hold this one too long. Okay, so from here, we're gonna take the thumbs in the hip crease, look down your nose, and nice firm thighs, come on all the way back up. Nice straight back. Okay, all right, very good. So from here, let's do some sun salutations, okay? So we're gonna come up to the front of your mat. This one does create a little bit of heat, so slow it down if you need to, or take a break or a drink of water if you, if you feel too overheated. Okay, so first one through, I won't really mention the breathing cycle, but just breathe what's comfortable for you. Generally, when you open in your chest, your arms, it's usually easier to take a good breath in, and when you're closing up, it's a good time to exhale, okay? So let's just go through a few of those. So we'll start out at the front of your space. You can have your legs take Tadasana, so feet together or up to hip distance apart. Nice straight arms. Broad across the, um, the front chest, like all the way across. Okay, and we're going to reach out and up. And then forward bend, so over you go. You can bend your knees so you get your hands right down on the floor by your feet. You need to actually make contact here. So squat down as much as you need to. We're going to take the right leg behind. So step the right leg back, knee to the floor, so that you're in a lunge. All right, and then from here, we won't, we, these we're not going to hold very long. So from here, we're going to step back so that you're in a push-up position. And you can do that straight legs or knees on the floor. And then bend the elbows beside the body, take the chest down. Okay, so just for this first one, I'll show you a couple options for the next pose in this sequence. So you could either come forward onto your forearms, like in a space, and this is a nice, um, a little bit more gentle way of protecting your low back. You're still doing a back bend, but you know, you're taking it easy a bit through your, especially the warm up of your practice. Tailbone points towards the floor and lengthening the front body. Now, on the other hand, if you feel like it's available to you to go a little deeper or you want to put more, a little more of that back bend, then you, should, you need to take your hands back under the shoulders about where the elbows were. And you place them on the floor. Top line of the shoulders like descends towards your heels. And then you're gonna come up a little higher, pelvis stays on the ground, keep those shoulders descending. So a little bit of a stronger back bend. From here, we'll come onto the hands and knees and back into your downward dog. We'll take a few breaths here. Now, when you're doing this one, your options are the other ones we showed earlier, right, from the knees. If you feel like you're tired or any discomfort in your shoulders or elbows, then do the version with the knees on the floor. And feel your breathing. Usually, it's about five breaths here. Okay, so we're gonna shift the weight forward, bend your knees, take your knees to the floor, bring your right foot up between your hands, and so you're back in your lunge position. Okay, tuck your back toes under, step forward. Whether so you're in your standing forward bend, you can bend your knees as much as you need to here. And then using your thighs, with a nice straight back, we're gonna reach out and up. And nice active arms as you take them down to your sides. Okay, so we'll do two sun salutations, which means four of these. Two of them is one complete one. So let's do a few more of those. I'll mention the breathing rhythm. It's a little harder for me to talk and do yoga at the same time. So, but anyways, let, I'll just kind of mention how we normally flow the breath with this. Okay, so we'll take an inhale. Reach up. Exhale, forward. Inhale, left leg back, knee down. Come to push up position and exhale to the floor. Choose one of the two back bends, Sphinx or Cobra. Inhale into your back bend. 
exhale into downward facing dog and breathe here about five breaths or so listen to the sound of your breathing Okay, complete your next exhale, knees down, left foot up between your hands, or you can just swing it up from the back if you prefer. Exhale, standing forward bend, squeeze in. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, nice active arms as you take them down. All right, two more. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, forward. Inhale, right leg back. Come to push up position. Exhale to the floor. Set your shoulders so they descend towards your bum. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale, downward dog. About five breaths here. Complete your next exhale, knees down, inhale, right foot up between your hands into a lunge, exhale, standing forward bend, inhale, reach out and up, good, exhale, inhale, reaching, exhale, forward, inhale, left side back, and we're gonna to come to a push-up position. Exhale to the floor. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe here. Soften your gaze. Kind of, you're thinking about allowing the senses to turn inwards. So nice soft gaze, listen to the sound of your breathing. Feel the breath in the body. Okay, on your next step, so complete your next exhale, then take your knees down, inhale, left foot up. Exhale, standing forward bend. Inhale, reach out and up. Okay, good, exhale, arms to the sides. Nice, okay, a couple breaths here, just take a moment from standing. So feeling your heart beating, or maybe noticing your breathing. And notice what it feels like to stand and to really be present standing, not necessarily anticipating what's happening next or where you're moving next, to just be present in your standing position. Okay. Let's do a couple standing poses. So we'll start with Trikonasana triangle pose. So you can take your feet apart. About a leg length or so is good, usually. And we'll set up the legs. So first, we're gonna, we're gonna do, it's a lateral stretch, we're heading to the right. We're gonna set up the legs first. So with your left leg, you can lift the heel and spin it out a little bit. And with your right leg, you turn the heel in top of the foot out. And so the whole right leg turns out. So the notch of the front of your ankle, your knee, and the middle of the front groin kind of line up. And then from here, from the waist, just turn so that your shoulders line up over your hips. Arms out, good breath in. And exhale, you're gonna fold at the groin. Take your hand somewhere on the leg. Just come on over, doesn't matter where land somewhere. I usually like to have like a wing, almost like a V, and grab the bone, the shin bone. And you can spin that bottom elbow forward a little bit to send that shoulder a little bit. So they have lots of space around um, the two sides of the neck, bottom side and upper side. 
the upper arm can reach straight up or if you've got some tension or things going on in your shoulder feel free to just do it with your hand on the waist and let's see if we can just rotate that um, side body but like so that your your rib the side ribs are turning towards the ceiling and take a few good breaths here legs stay active so both thighs are firming and then you know now that you're in a more um, sort of static uh, position you really feel the pose especially through the breath so notice the movement of the body with the um, breathing and notice as you hold it for a few you know moments what starts to let go so just check you know legs are active lots of space around the neck turning the side body a little bit towards the ceiling okay so to come in you can press into your heels you might look down so i like to look down and then inhale and come up and turn both feet forward okay Let's go to the other side. So here, we're gonna, with the right foot, angle the heel out a bit, so your foot's angled in at maybe 60 degrees or so. And with the left foot, you're gonna turn that in, top of the leg out. Shoulders over the hips, arms out. Exhale, coming in on this side, folding, you're tilting the pelvis to the side. And optional would be the right arm to be straight up in the air or hand on the waist, whatever feels better for you. Both uh, legs or thighs, especially firming. Okay, and then come into your breathing. Notice where you feel the breath. You know, often we're very focused on the front body breathing. Feel it also in the back body, the upper back even. So in the whole torso, notice your breathing. Okay, a couple more breaths here. Okay, so we're gonna come up out of there. All right. <clears throat> Let's do one or two more standing poses. We'll, we'll do something similar, but with a bent leg. So this one's a uh, Parshva Konasana, or bent side angle pose. So we're gonna change the legs back. So we're gonna take left heel out a bit, right leg turns in, and square your hips over your, uh, sorry, your shoulders over your hips. This time we bend the knee, the right knee. So the right knee is gonna bend. When you do that, it loves to roll in. So you keep nice lengthening it, um, position the knee over the ankle. So keep that leg rotating out a little bit so you have good length on the inner thigh. Okay, this one's a good um, side stretch too. So on your exhale, you're gonna come over. This time we can prop the arm uh, on the leg. And I like to swing the upper arm forward with the palm down and reach it over the head. You can come in different ways, but um, it sort of helps get the shoulder in a good position here. And here, you're thinking about that outer chain from the outer right foot all the way up the side body, all the way up the arm, and reach. Reach here, breathe. Also, um, it's really, natural sort of easy to kind of let go of that bottom shoulder so uh, you do want to actually actively press that arm against the leg and really keep descending the shoulder so you have lots of room around there a couple more breaths here okay Let's come on up out of that side. And we're switched over. <clears throat> okay, so spin your right heel out, turn your left leg, your left foot in, top of the foot out, whole leg pointing out to the side. Okay, 
on your exhale, bend that left knee. And when you do that, you still will kind of have your, um, your spine straight. So you're not necessarily roll out tilting to the side. You're just dropping that knee down nice straight back vertically. Okay, good breath in. And then exhale, over you go. Okay, remember to keep that leg tracking back a little bit. And the, the right arm, you can reach forward and up and see, you can custom make your stretch a little bit here. Reach that upper arm and try to get, you know, as much length down that chain as you can. Now, on the other hand, if it feels really intense, then back off. So you have to find, a, find that place for you that feels good, like a good stretch, but you're not forcing. Okay, and then breathe here. And keep that shoulder descending down, the left one. Okay, good. Okay, then we're gonna come up out of that side. Okay, one more standing pose, then we're gonna come and do stuff from the floor. Okay. So the one we just did, uh, Parshva Panasana, that one there's a Parivrita or revolved version, a twisted version of it. So we're gonna do that today. And you can come in a couple different ways. We'll come in from kneeling today. So <clears throat> for that one, come on down to a kneeling position. Now, if, you're, if you have anything around like a towel or something, you could pop it across um, your sticky mat. Uh, because, you know, especially if you have any sensitivity in your knees. All right. So from here, we're going to do like a little bit of a lunge type, type position to start with. Right foot forward. Actually, and also if you have blocks around, you could use them too just to help you get a little more height here. Um, when you're doing this lunge, we're not aiming towards like a really deep lunge and dropping your butt towards the floor. You're actually looking at having like a more, um, the femur bone parallel with the floor, a little more like that. All right, so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the left arm. So you're, you're on your right foot, uh, left arm reaches up, reach, as if you're lengthening all the way from your point of contact in the floor all the way up to your arms, to your hands. From the waist, hips are like a steering wheel, so they, you're driving forward, but your waist turns and take the elbow outside the knee. Now, if that's not available to you, you can just grab the leg with your hand. That's totally fine too. So it varies from person to person. If, you're, if, you, if you can reach across enough, your body will twist enough, you take it across. Otherwise, just work with it. And then we're gonna take the hands together. And when you press, you're like turning your chest. Now, at the same time, the leg is important. You press your leg, your knee against the arm and the arm against the knee, so it makes like a vice. So it's like even pressure, in and out. It's a little harder to breathe and twist. We'll take a few breaths here. Imagine your spine lengthening and growing long. Okay. So lastly, you could do the standing version of it if you want to test that out. It's a little, little more work with your balance. So if you want to try that out, you would tuck your back toes under, and then you lift that leg, that knee off the floor, firm the thigh, and work it from there. The first aspect with the knee on the ground is the priority, but if you want to try balancing with your leg straight, go ahead and do that too. Okay, let's release there. So you can come back onto your knees and change legs, bring the other one forward. I'm just gonna flip around so I'll be facing the screen. All right, so we got the left foot forward this time. You may find twisting one way is a lot easier than the other way, so you kind of go with where your body takes you in this. 
All right, so raise that right arm up, reach. Okay, turn from the waist, elbow outside the knee, or possibly you can kind of start working the arm down the other leg. It really varies person to person. Hands together, press. Like a vice, leg against the arm, arm against the leg. And breathe here. A little hard to breathe, you might have to take shorter breaths. Imagine your spine lengthening. Okay, lastly, if you want to experiment with a straight leg, tuck your back toes under, lift the knee up, nice firm thigh. About three or four more breaths like that. Okay, good. Okay, let's release there. And we'll come back down onto your knees. You can probably get rid of uh, your blanket. We will do a couple lunges next. So if you're sensitive in your knees, um, you might actually just keep it there. It kind of varies person to person. Okay. So from here, maybe what we'll do is a couple things from kneeling, and then we're gonna lay down on the back. And we'll do similar movement on the back. So from here, let's do um, just a little work on the legs and hips. So we're gonna start by just doing some lunges. If you've got blocks, you could grab your blocks. Don't worry if you don't, no problem. We're gonna come like into a lunge position, the right foot forward. The, the, really the advantage of having blocks, or like Mark mentioned, he had um, uh, some books, like you know, a trilogy of books in one of those firm cases, that's perfect. It would be a similar size. But you need to. <laughs> so if you're if you're an avid reader, uh, you could use that. Um, all right. Your other option, of course, is fingertips down on the floor. So from here, we're gonna kind of just walk our hands back and lift the top of the leg up off the floor. And here, if you're thinking about lengthening over that leg. So here, um, the back body loves to get really long. What you want to think about is lengthening the front body. So between the pubic bone and the navel, the navel and the heart, that's kind of that area you're thinking of lengthening, firming that right thigh as well. And then we're going to come forward. Okay, so here you're opening up the hip flexors, but you're also softening the front groin. We're, right where that leg meets the pelvis. So on the right side, you're relaxing, softening that left side, deepening the stretch. Okay, we're gonna walk back again, firm that thigh. And then forward again. <clears throat> okay, so from here, let's do um, a pose called lizard. So we're just gonna get a little more into the outer and inner groins a bit. So I'm just gonna turn so maybe you can see me a little bit better. You're probably fine exactly where you are. Okay, so hopefully you can see my foot. Um, okay, so you're gonna take your right foot a couple of inches to the right and turn the foot out a little bit, like maybe you're 60 degrees or something like that. So you can you get your hands on the inside. So your hands are on the inside of that leg, right legs there. And then here, let's keep that big toe really rooted down. It likes to lift up. You're doing a bit like a push-up. You're gonna bend your elbows and start to descend towards the floor any amount, but keep rooted that big toe. So here, you know, I usually feel it in the inner groin area of the right leg. Uh, you might feel it also a bit in the outer groin too. And you can go any amount up to having your forearms on the floor and, uh, here again, try to lengthen the front body. So pubic bone to navel, navel to heart, 
or navel to solar plexus, solar plexus to heart. Breathe here, really get nice, good work in those hips. Today's a good day for that because it's kind of hot and your, your muscles are all a little warmed up in the hips. Sometimes when there's a lot of heat, I like to do hip stuff because it gives you a little advantage. All right, so we're gonna come up out of there. We'll do the second version of it. The second version would be to turn your foot straight so that if your, your outer edge of your foot and the outer edge of your mat would be parallel with each other. And then here, you can still have your hands on the inside or you can work one hand on each side. This time, the inside edge of the foot, I'm gonna back up because I'm pretty, I might not be showing up on the camera. Um, so this time, the inside of the edge of the foot lifts up here. And you can do that, you know, it can be pretty strong stretch. So take it easy. If it feels on the other hand very comfortable for you, then you can start walking that foot across your sticky mat and work it from there. And again, try to lengthen that front body a little bit. A few more breaths like that. Okay, so we're gonna release there. And from here, you're gonna come back into your kneeling position. And we're gonna go on to the other side. So let's do um, left leg up. <clears throat> First, let's do those lunges. If you've got your um, blocks, you can use that if you like. And then we're gonna shift the hips back. Um, top of the foot comes off the floor. You would walk your blocks back or your hands back and lengthen over that leg a little bit. And you, if you have blocks, you can choose any of the heights of the blocks. Okay, then we're gonna hip, hip shift forward. Soften the front going on that left leg and get a nice deep stretch of the hip flexor on the right. And then back again. Firm that thigh, give you a little deeper stretch. And then we're going to come forward. From here, let's do the lizard pose. So you're going to take your hands to the inside, walk your foot a couple of inches to the left, turn the top edge of your foot at a little bit of an angle out. And then here, you're just doing a little bit of a push up. I shouldn't say just because it's actually quite challenging, but keep that big toe planted and bend your elbows. It doesn't matter how close you get to the floor, You're, the idea is to stretch out uh, the inner groins here. So breathe here, keep pressing the big toe down. Listen to the sound of your breathing. We're going to straighten back up. Okay, so now you're going to turn so the outer edge of the foot is parallel with the outer edge of your sticky mat. And you're going to start, you could maybe wiggle the foot a little bit to the right and start to take the inside of the edge of the foot off the floor so you allow your leg to rotate out to the side. Uh, any amount is good until you feel something going on in the hip. Now, be careful of your knees because the hips, you know, there's a lot of really big, strong muscles there, you know, make sure there's nothing going on in your knee. No discomfort, you need to back off if that's the case. Alternately, if you need more stretch, you can start to walk the foot a little bit across um, the front of your mat. Breathe here. Kind of, con I like to concentrate on where I feel the stretch. So for me, I, you know, really feel it strongly in the other hip. And then you're gonna really concentrate there as if by really concentrating there and breathing, you're creating space in that, in that area. Okay, we're gonna come back up <clears throat> and then you can just ease out gently so you can come back onto kneeling. 
All right, so from here, we're gonna repeat similar type, you know, in yoga, a lot of poses repeat themselves, whether you're standing, sitting, lying down. We're gonna do a little bit of a similar movement from lying on your back, and you can see how that might feel different uh, from coming into it from your back. If you have a strap, grab your strap. No worries if you don't have a strap, it's fine. You're gonna lay down on your back. We're gonna do like a half happy baby. So you start out, just lying down, knees bent, feet on the floor. And we're gonna take the right leg in and lift your heel up. Ideally, you know, you're, you're moving towards having the bottom of your foot facing the ceiling and your thigh coming down uh, onto the ribs. It's not gonna be available to everybody right away. You might have your leg up a little, don't worry about it. Just kind of work with it. You could take your hands behind um, the knee to help descend that. You could take your hands up somewhere on your shin, or you can grab, you know, if you're using a strap, it's kind of gives you a little more leverage. You can wrap it around the top of your foot and pull down. Now, when you're doing this, the lower back sometimes likes to really flatten it on the floor. So you imagine that your tailbone is turning down towards the floor and there's like a little micro space in your low back. And here, pull straight down. Okay, we're gonna, from this place, keeping your thigh where it is, can you start to take your heel back behind the head any amount? It might go millimeter, it might go further, without letting your thigh lift off the, the body. So you just work that back a little bit, keep descending the tailbone towards the floor so there's a micro space in your low back. Bend the knee and sink straight down into half baby again. And then again here, start to straighten by bringing the heel behind the head any amount. And release that, it can be like pretty strong stretch, so we won't hold that too long. Sometimes moving in and out is better. Okay, and then again, press that leg towards straightening a little bit and release. Squeeze it down into half happy baby. Okay, let's head to the other side. All right, so we're gonna take uh, your left leg up, either grab behind and kind of squeeze that down towards your rib cage, grab your shins, or use your some you know something around your foot, and then press down. You're working towards the heel lifting up so the shin bone is vertical, but you work with yourself, don't force anything. You just kind of taking, um, you know, taking up the slack. Tailbone points towards the floor. There's a micro bend in your low back area. Okay, and then from here, you're going to start to take the, without letting your thigh lift up, can you bring your heel any amount uh, back behind the head or as if you're heading that way? And bend the knee again back into your um, half happy baby. And again, work towards straightening. And bend the knee, press straight down. And one more, work towards straightening. Okay, and then bend the knee, press your thigh straight down. Okay, good work. It's quite intense uh, stretch. So you can just sit for a moment with your knees bent, feet on the floor, arms out. We'll just do one or two more things and then we're gonna take a relaxation, like about a five minute relaxation. So that's coming. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna roll to the side. Oh, I think actually we're gonna to have to go right into that relaxation. So uh, we'll continue next time with some of the other things going on. But before we do that, let's just take a moment um, to take child's position. 
just briefly, a few breaths, make sure everything feels pretty good. Doing knees together or legs apart, knees apart, whatever you like. This is a passive one. Okay, so you can have your arms up over the head or hands down by your, your um, feet. Don't worry if the head doesn't reach the floor. You can take your hands even on fists and let your forehead rest. Here, just take a few breaths into your back body. Okay, so from here, you can come to lay down in Shavasana or the relax a corpse position. So for that one, you're actually, you're just, you lay down, arms out, legs a bit apart. If you have tension in your neck or upper body, you might pop a blanket under the head just to the top of the level of the shoulders. That might feel better. Uh, if your low back tends to get sensitive, then popping a rolled up blanket under your knees will usually help that settle a bit. Okay, so we're going to take uh, about five minutes like that. And here we're going to do a little guided relaxation. Okay. So first just start out by letting your breathing take its own natural rhythm. Just let go. Body is breathing itself. Okay, and then we're gonna kind of work from the feet up to the head, just mentally repeating. Visualize you're releasing any residual tension. My feet, calves, and thighs are relaxing. My feet, calves, and thighs are relaxed. My hips and buttocks are relaxing. My hips and buttocks are relaxed. My lower back is relaxing. My lower back is relaxed. My middle and upper back are relaxing. My middle and upper back are relaxed. My abdomen and chest are relaxing. My abdomen and chest are relaxed. My neck and shoulders are relaxing. My neck and shoulders are relaxed. My arms and hands are relaxing. My arms and hands are relaxed. My face and scalp are relaxing. My face and scalp are relaxed. My whole body is relaxing deeply and completely. My whole body is relaxing deeply and completely. 
My whole body is relaxing deeply and completely. Couple more breaths like that. Just settle, feel your breathing. So lengthen your next exhale and deep in the following inhale, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Take a moment to have a stretch out. And then we'll usually close the class together from sitting, but do what you like. <laughs> I'm going to just, I normally do a, a closing chant at the end. It's a dedication um, to the practice, so. Okay, thanks everybody.